Hello, welcome to What's Happening. I'm Christian Garnett, and today I am joined by Susan Bauer from the Old Ladies Against Underwater Garbage. How are you, Susan? I'm good, Christian. So before I ask any questions about Olog, um, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I am a retired psychologist. I retired when I was 80. I was in private practice and public practice with Gosnold for years and with um, Prospect Hill. Uh, I have thought of myself as a runner for most of my life um, until my knees got tired and the dog ran into them. And uh, around 55 or 60, I switched to swimming and gradually it has become the major um, sport and one of the major interests that I have. I can see how that um, I can see how that leads into Olog <laughs> with you getting into swimming. Yeah, it. Um, I used to swim a lot in salt water, and I loved that. But then, <clears throat> in um, 2003, I moved to Chatham and lived there for six years with um, Pete Wiseman until he died. And there, it's really dangerous to swim in the salt water, it wasn't so much a shark problem back then, but a, a cold current um, swept away problem. So I switched to ponds and hated them at first, but I kept looking for one that was as clean as a swimming pool with no mud, no leeches, no snapping turtles. But I found instead these nifty little gray turtles and painted turtles. And I was spellbound immediately. You know, who were these creatures and why were they interested in me. So when Peter gave me a camera that fit into my dive mask, I was hooked. And I have thousands of pictures of turtles. I've made them into Turtle Sisters books and different things. I am sometimes known as the Turtle Lady of Cape Cod, which I'm very proud of. That's really neat. But on one this swim, title. yeah, on one swim around 2017, 2018, I got tired of swimming over the same um, knitted cap, the same cell phone, the same seven golf balls, the same pair of sunglasses. So I asked two swimmers and got a kayaker and said, well, let's just swim around. This is up in Chatham. Let's just swim around and pick up the trash. And we just did. And it was a one-off thing. But when we were finished and we thought we had done such good, we had a, a bushel of trash. We thought that was terrific. Now, I think that's nothing. I wouldn't bother with a pond that only has a bushel of trash. We get multiple bushels plus tires plus Adirondack chairs and tables and bicycles and boats and this sort of yeah. thing. Um, Although we're actually getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Okay. Um, thank you for telling me about yourself, but now would you mind telling me about Old Ladies Against Underwater Garbage, Olog? How, well, um, what do you guys do? Um, um, well, as I was saying, it started very informally, but then we said, oh, we're a bunch of old ladies against underwater garbage. So then nothing happened for a year or so. Now what we are and what we do is we're a bunch of about six swimmers and we have a, a, a one kayaker that goes with us. Obviously we need more than that. You don't want to kayak zipping back and forth between six swimmers because the, right. the goal is to take the swimmers and the kayaks and the little floats if we have them that we can tow behind ourselves or behind the kayak and to sweep around the entire circumference of a pond out to about a depth of nine feet and to pick up every single thing that we find there. And at first we thought we're just going to find golf balls and beer cans and nips, and we find plenty of those. The odd piece of clothing, you'd be surprised, the one shoe, the one boot, the garden gnome. But we had- <laughs> not... Garden gnomes? Oh yeah, we had <clears throat> garden gnome. Um, <clears throat> one of my personal favorites is a, is a rubber frog that actually functions as a squirt gun. I have quite the collection of squirt guns from underwater. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't realize is that people will put big stuff into a pond because it's cheaper and more convenient than taking it to the dump. So right. tires, truck tires, 
chairs, tables. Uh, uh, you're finished with them, in they go. So we now work with pond associations. So for example, if we want to clean up Jenkins Pond or John's Pond or Mashpee Wakeby, and we work from Falmouth to uh, Orleans Chatham Brewster. So we have done, um, we have cleaned up ponds in many, many towns from right. Brewster, Chatham, Orleans, all the way down to Falmouth and everything in the, in the middle. Um, so we work with pond associations and we ask them to get us half the number of kayaks that we have of swimmers. So if we have six swimmers, we want three kayaks. If we occasionally have four swimmers, we want two kayaks and they will man the kayak. And so pairs of swimmers are assigned to a kayak and they learn that when they see the legs go up, <laughs> they go and uh, follow them or get close to them without hitting them on the head and be prepared to take whatever is, is handed to them. Sometimes you have to have a knife or wire clippers because you'll have a piece of cable handed to you. Um, yeah. we, we learn, we've learned a lot. Everybody in the kayak needs to wear a glove. Every swimmer needs to wear a glove. You're gonna be dealing with broken bottles and, and stuff like that. Um, also, it's really good to have a little float that is tied behind at least one kayak because when you get more than one tire, what we used to do was dive down. We'd take two, depending on the size of the tire or three swimmers on the count of three, down we'd go, break it free of the mud, bring it up. And then in treading water, we would have to lift this hundred pound thing yeah. out of the water so that a kayak could spear it uh, as it, you know, and put it right on the bow of the kayak. But then we almost swamped a kayak. So now we, of course, well, that, that's you know, impressive though. But. It, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. And yeah. our youngest is, is 65 at this point and oldest is me and I'm 82. So <clears throat> we work, we work hard and then we bring, you know, we've done, it's up to me to, to go ahead and see if there's snapping turtles, see if there's, um, we scout every pond before we clean it so that we make sure that we are not dealing with weed. You can't see the garbage if it's solid um, water lilies. Um, we're not dealing with a whole lot of snapping turtles that are going to get upset because what we really wanna do is help the pond. We're not working for people making it a better playground or being their mother and cleaning up after their mess. We're wor really working for the pond itself, the ecology, the citizens of the pond, the fish, the turtles, even the leeches and the um, diving beetles and snails. Uh, we want that to be healthier and in better shape. Right, which is a great goal. I, I, I doubt there's anybody on Cape Cod who would disagree with your goal, but- Every once um, in a while, wait, wait, there is, there is. Really? Um, we have gotten one email and one person, different, two, different, two different people who came up and said very seriously, you are doing a terrible disservice because if anyone hears about you, they will think we have junky ponds on Cape Cod and we must pretend that every single one of them is as pure and lily white as, you know. Uh, That's ridiculous. Yeah, so uh, you can't we, just pretend we, there isn't a problem. We do get. We, we, I have even swum past um, a family lounging happily on their dock and their beach, and uh, I started picking up a whole bunch of sodden dog toys. And they said, "Oh, please leave them. We the dog likes them." Between you and me, dogs do not dive down nine feet. They don't pick up stuff. I could tell by the amount of algae and stuff on top of them that they had been there for two or three years. So what we do in that case is pop to the surface, smile nicely and say, of course not, thank you very much, goodbye. And then I simply go underwater and we each wear a belt and I can stuff an amazing amount of stuff in the belt and then swim away. And when I'm out of sight, then I just unload seven golf balls and two dog toys or whatever. Uh, right. 
we have our ways. So how many members does OLOG have? We started with three swimmers and now we're up to six or seven. Um, at first it was very informal, sort of wanna pick up some garbage, let's try it. Now we have a tryout system because we really want very strong swimmers and very good team members um, and people with immense amounts of common sense because you never know what situation you're going to be in. Um, right. Diving, cleaning up a pond in October when it's really cold, it may be raining and the water's 65 is a very different deal than doing something in July. Uh, and, and every pond is different. Um, if it's tremendously muddy, all you have to do is have one awkward person who keeps hitting the bottom and nobody can see anything. So for example, next June 24th, we have tryouts. Um, to get more information on that, you'd have to go to our email and, and that's olaug, O-L-A-U-G dot M-A at gmail.com. And if you sort of sign up or express interest in the tryouts, then I will get, get back to you and, and say, you know, what place and what time and, and this sort of thing. And at that tryout, um, everyone would be expected to swim a half a mile in under 30 minutes and to be able to dive down and pick up golf balls and that sort of thing in eight or nine feet of water. What we found is that as we've become better known through uh, a, a lot of news coverage, whether that's newspaper or television or radio, uh, people come to us and say, oh, I'm an avid swimmer. I swim from May 1st to Halloween. Uh, I, I would be perfect. And then you right. find that out that they're 55. No, you're not perfect. This is old ladies against underwater garbage. You have to be 64, 65. But more importantly, you find out that they do the breaststroke or they're, they're not really, you know, they say, well, 30 minutes. Oh, I can swim for 30 minutes. We swim for 90 minutes. The point is if you can cover a, a, a long amount of, of, of mileage, you know, if you can get a full half mile in half an hour, you're probably a strong enough swimmer to do that again or to do that uh, amount of time. We sometimes cover more than half a mile. Um, anyway, that's that's what the tryouts are for. And uh, I wasn't aware you had tryouts, but it, it makes so much sense that you do. Yeah, we, we didn't used to, but now we do. Hmm. So you uh, you brought something up there. So you do not take new members who are under 60? No, we are the old ladies against underwater garbage. They, you have to be 64. That's the that's the absolute it's 64 and up for 64 and up. So, okay. we, um, and people say, well, 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 why there are a couple of reasons. I think it would be probably a rationalization to say, well, if you're over 64, you're likely to be more available. You're likely to be retired and not say, oh, I can't do any dives except on the weekend. But the real reason is that older women are really the repositories of wisdom for a culture. You name the culture and I'll point you to the, the, the women's circles, the women's stories. Um, and something really remarkable happens when we do these cleanups, ostensibly, therefore to get the, the litter out of, out of the ponds. But when we actually do them, at the end, we bring the kayaks in, we bring the swimmers in, and we come out on the beach and kayak after kayak is beginning to disgorge this huge amount of stuff. Sometimes we turn them upside down and shake them. Other times it's in basket loads. Other times it's the, uh, the float that's being towed or the tires on the, on the prow. <clears throat> And this, this pile grows and grows and grows. And with it grows the interest in the people around it. 
So the pond association comes, then people see a whole bunch of cars parked and they come and we'll have 20, 30 people gathered around. We come out of the water and we are pumped. We are excited. We are relieved. It's always iffy. I'm always relieved when I count the swimmers. Once I counted the swimmers, we went in with five and I came out with four. That was really scary. Found out that one took off at the other end of the pond and decided to walk home. But I'm always relieved when I get all my swimmers, all my kayakers, they're there. And our excitement and our joy and our amazement, you really can't call it anything like amazement. You, you hear the swimmers, did you see that boat? That had a hole stuck in it. I could have gotten through there. That boat must have been 18 feet long. It was all the stuff we see. Did you see the snapping turtle? Did you see the big bass? Did you see that turtle that was followed by the bass? We see all sorts of stuff. And the people around us suddenly go from my parking space and my pond and my dock, pond users, pond exploiters, and suddenly they become pond lovers. And it's just like, we can do this, we can help, we could keep this clean, we can. And everybody is united and everybody is happy and everybody has hope. We couldn't have planned that if we tried. Right. I think I, think I get your reasoning. Um, is it, so if it's only, if it's only ladies, if it's only people over 64, I'm assuming it's also exclusively for ladies. Yes. Although the kayakers can be anything, any age, any gender, you know, that's, um, we're just very appreciative that people show up and, and help collect garbage. What sort of outside help do you help, uh, do you accept? So divers are only the old ladies against their water, water garbage, but um, what other uh, help do you accept? Um, if we find something that we absolutely cannot move, um, we go to professional divers, um, their dive clubs, um, mainly in Plymouth and that sort of thing. And they will come down, they have lift bags and they know how to take something very large out of the pond. We wouldn't do that if it's really become sort of part of, part of the pond, but if it was an old styrofoam dock and is breaking down, we would make sure that we would get outside help and get that out of the pond. We accept all kinds of help when it comes to paying us. And we are paid in cookies. And so our services are free. Um, occasionally a pond association will give us a donation, which is very useful because we use that just for equipment. But um, at the end of every swim, the, the really good pond associations have coffee and water, lots of water and cookies. And we just go through, uh, we, we have become cookie aficionados. We can tell you where the best cookies are on Cape Cod. Um, <laughs> uh, what is your favorite cookie on Cape Cod? Okay, I don't mean this- You can't say that without giving me an answer. Plug, but there is a store called the Corner Store in uh, Chatham that has have cookies. They're about almost three bucks a piece. They're the size of my head. They are flat, they are chewy. The ginger cookie, makes me cry. It is so spicy. It is so wonderful that I sit there after a dive and just weep. Uh, but they have about six other kinds. Um, but but there, are, there are many, many, many bakeries. Um, Falmouth, oh my goodness, their French pastry shop has a, a ginger cookie that is wonderful. There, there are many and we know them all. <laughs> Uh, earlier in this interview, you said that you know that somebody is ready to give you trash when their legs go up. What, what does that mean? That means that if you're sitting in a kayak, you've got two right. swimmers and you're vaguely aware of them because we always wear um, orange or red or day glow caps. We never wear a black or a dark blue bathing cap so that our kayaks can see us but they don't know what we're doing until our legs go up. When our legs go up, we are diving on a piece of trash. Oh, so okay. <clears throat> that's what we mean. The legs go up and, and down we go and we pick it up 
And we've gotten so that we have sort of contests. How many beer cans can you pick up on a single dive? And again, you stick one in your belt, grab two more and three. Uh, yeah. So we do that and that's the good kayakers have learned that they don't wait until someone comes up treading water with something in their hand saying, can you get here? I have a table. Uh, they, so when they go down, you already know you need to start moving towards them. You start them. moving towards them. Exactly. Exactly. That, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, I'm running how out of light. Have, <laughs> how long has uh, Olog been active? When did it start? Started around 2017, 18, but it's really been active since 2020. 20, okay. 21, 22. The last three years, we have done a tremendous amount. Before that, it was hit or miss. Got it. So the last three years have been your biggest years since starting yeah. the log. Yeah. And Nick, and we're already fully scheduled for 2022. But after our tryouts, we may have, we may break the original team in half, add three more people to each one of those and have two teams. Wow. Yeah, that's our hope. That would be impressive if you guys expanded like that. Oh, I think we will. Expanded like that. I think we will. I've really appreciated all those stories and all this information. Uh, even though I've seen you in, I've seen you work in person, which was really impressive. And honestly, it was a really fun time just going out in the water with you all. But if somebody wants to reach out to you, if they want to help you donate anything, how can you be reached? And um, how do you feel about that? Oh, I feel very strongly about that. Thank you for asking. Um, our email address, which is where if you want to um, join the tryouts or just want information about us is olog.ma at gmail.com. That's O-L-A-U-G dot M-A at gmail.com. Um, I'll put on the also, screen there. Yeah. Oh, good. We also have a website, <clears throat> which is olog-ma.com. Uh, and you can go to there and see what we're doing. Um, because we are not a legal nonprofit, we are, we are not anything. We're not a 5013C, we're not anything. Um, it makes us hard, it makes it hard for us to get um, donations. If we clean your pond, it's really nice if the Pond Association um, gives us some money. Aside from that, if people want to donate, they really can do it. And the way you do it, is you give a donation to the Falmouth Water Stewards, which is the big organization that does water quality testing and um, protects the waters of Falmouth. And I am a board member of that. And if any check or any donation to Falmouth Water Stewards is earmarked for the old ladies against underwater garbage, then we have like a little tiny budget within their budget. And we can use that for, um, bright, bright bathing caps with Olog on them or um, an underwater camera. Um, mm -hmm. We've got our eye on a nifty one. It's about 500 bucks, but we're more than halfway to that so that we can really see that garbage coming right off the bottom. Is there anything else you would like to add? There isn't. You've, you've let me spew off and that's been wonderful. I've appreciated it. I love learning about you guys. I'm, I'm glad that I could uh, experience it. Anyway. Um, oh, a one shout out. One shout out to your grandmother, Christian. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. If you're watching Thank this. Thank you, Nana. You better be watching. It's your grandson. Come on. She, she probably will be watching this. And yeah, I wouldn't know about you without her. So there you go. Um, Susan, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of What's Happening. Thank you so much for sharing the word about the the Olog and just just taking the time out of your day. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Christian. Bye for now. See you in the pond. Bye.